Good morning and welcome back to the Bookstack Coffee Chat. This is Daylene Bickle here and forgive me for being a little late this morning. I've been having some technical issues as well as a dog in the background which it sounds like he just went off again. So please forgive little um, Obi in the background for that but hopefully many of you are dog lovers and owners and understand that. So today we are talking about some uh, youth, young adult and juvenile fiction. So that was thanks to one of you viewers, I believe it was Hannah, who said that she enjoys reading YA books. And I agree. I enjoy that as well. I've always enjoyed reading my uh, son's books as well whenever he would bring things home. Actually, both kids, but one was an avid reader, my other not so much. So because of that, um, I've discovered that my youngest really loves graphic novels a lot. So when I went to the library last week, I made sure that I got a couple for him. And the first that I wanted to talk to you today about is Show Me History about Alexander Hamilton, one of the Fighting Founding Fathers. And this one is by Mark Schulman and Kelly Tyndall. And so if your kids are highly visual and um, enjoy stories that way, this is a great book, but it's not for really young readers because the, I'll see if you can see this here. See, there's a lot of small words, like the, the typeface is small, but they're big words in um, the lexicon, right? And their understanding. So, um, but this is a really, really good and entertaining read because there are two extra characters in here who are the narrators and bring it into today's language for kids. So it is a good book. So if um, you are learning or your kids are learning about um, the Revolutionary War, um, the founding of our country, like my eighth grader is right now, they might appreciate this book um, like he did. Another book that I... Uh, picked up and I was I only had a few minutes at the library so I was just basically browsing what they had on the top shelf displayed for the books and you know me I am a World War II um, avid reader and so when I saw this book this one is show that to you Maurice and his dictionary a true story and so this is written by Carrie Fagan and illustrated by Enzo Lord Mariano. And so I thought, oh, well, my eighth grader also likes World War II history. And I thought this would be a really big hit with him. And this one is a very quick read. Um, not a lot of text on the pages. I don't know if you can see that. Like the other one was. Um, larger illustrations and so forth. And it had an interesting story but it wasn't as captivating um, to him anyway. Uh, he ended the book before he read it before I did. And I asked him what he thought and he ended, he said, well, it doesn't really have anything to do with the dictionary. And so I was like, really? That, that was on the cover and that's, you know, part of the title. Right. Um, and it does make an appearance, but at the very end of the book. So I could see where his frustration was. And it also kind of left you hanging. Um, it left off at a good spot and, yeah, it left you hanging. But then at the end is where I really liked it because having helped people write their life stories and, and so fascinated with personal history, I like these last three pages that show actual photos of the, oh, get the right angle here. There you go. Um, so actual photos, this is based on the author's father, his experience um, traveling, escaping um, Europe. They lived in Belgium at the time during when World War II um, was starting and Belgium was invaded. So they escaped, they went to France and then France wasn't safe. So then they made a passage on a ship to Jamaica. And I actually, if I had known, I'd forgotten that Jamaica was um, one of the ports that was ex uh, accepting refugees um, and they actually had a refugee camp. So they had to uh, um, live in a barbed wire enclosed camp, um, weren't supposed to make any money, weren't supposed to buy or sell or trade or anything. 
So they were hard pressed to try and find a way to get out and find a new home. Um, but the author's father um, was able to do so um, by going to college. And um, I won't give too much of the story away. Um, but yeah, that it's an interesting read. It was just disappointing for my son. So I'll leave it up to you if you want to read it or not. The next one that I read, well, actually, I'm still reading. I'm halfway through, but I'm um, enjoying so far is Here Lies the Librarian uh, by Richard Peck. And so I will say that the beginning is a little odd. Um, a tornado goes through a, a cemetery and upturns some graves. So that's a little odd. Um, but once you get past that, it's actually a quite an entertaining read. And I particularly enjoyed um, the interviews for the new librarian in town. And that's one of the basis of the books is that their library has been sitting idle for quite a while, need of repair, the town didn't have time or money for the repairs. And um, anyway, the tornado kind of ushers in some new opportunities for a librarian and for the library to get fixed up. And I do enjoy the wit and humor. And I thought my um, youngest son would really enjoy this, actually my oldest one too, because they're into old cars. And I did realize, but I didn't realize they were going to be um, use it against this book, but they like classic cars, not antique cars. So this book is about, you know, the old Tin Lizzie's and all those original cars from the 20s and 30s, right? So, which is older than they, my son's particularly like, but I'm enjoying reading this. And if you have a car buff or you enjoy literary books about libraries and librarians like I do, um, this book is a good one. So finally on my list today, um, I was really, really, really um, looking forward to digging into this book. I, I thought the cover was compelling. This was a, a, advertised as a YA book, right? It's advertised as a Puffin, Puffin Modern Classic, right? So it's a classic book. It was, um, the last copyright was 1973, or I'm sorry, not the last, the initial copyright was 1973. Um, it has all these rave reviews, a National Book Award finalist, an ALA notable book, a New York Times Outstanding Book of the Year. And as I've mentioned before, I really need to take those recommendations as a grain of salt for me personally, because um, it's a World War II book. And let me share which book it is. It is Summer of My German Soldier by Betty Green. And so... I thought this would be a really, really good read. And my, I'll just make a little side note here that when my eighth grader picked it up, A, he's like, well, that's an odd size, which it is compared to the normal. Oh, oh, that's a bad view there, but see how small it is compared? It's little, I guess they call it pocketbook. But also he was, my son was really annoyed by how close the words are to the margins at the top and also at the bottom. He's like, look how close the page number is to the bottom of the, the page. So he wouldn't even pick it up to start reading it because the formatting just bothered him, which I'm glad he didn't read because as I started reading, I'm like, oh, okay. And I was disappointed because the author does a fantastic job of getting into um, the emotional thoughts of characters. It's the main character is a 12 year old girl really, really um, insightful analysis of, you know, personalities, different characters in the book, great, um, you know, conversation, dialogue is really good and engaging. The setting is, is really good. The topic is really good, but, and you've been waiting for that, but, right? And it just kept taking the Lord's name in vain. And I know to many of you readers that might not bother you, but the Holy Spirit within me is grieved every time that I see that. And I shudder every time I see it. And it wasn't just once, it wasn't just twice. I even started skimming through to, to skip ahead to maybe get to the end to see, I don't even know what happens at the end because I just, every time I opened a page, there was another one. <sighs> now, um, for those of you who are wondering why this is such a big deal to me, it goes back to the Bible, right? 
And so back in Exodus um, chapter 20, verse 7, this is where the Ten Commandments are given, right? And one of the Ten Commandments, it says here, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Sounds pretty straightforward to me, right? And it's very clear. Um, a lot of people, I think, have forgotten about that these days. And overall, in 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 reading, in, in writing as an author, you know, whatever we do, we're to do for the Lord, right? And we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. And it took me to, um, he pointed me to Colossians, let me put that up here, Colossians 3, verse 17. And it says, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So we're to give thanks to God, not to, you know, take his name flippantly and use it um, just without any reverence at all. And sometimes to in profane, like in anger. Um, that's not how we're to treat his name. His name is holy. And so that, my friends, is why I had started this Books That Coffee Chat to help share books and also to warn about books that don't do that. So I just wanted to let you know that um, there were a couple of eh, books in my reading list this week. There was one hit and there was one really not so good in my book. And again, these are my opinions, and I welcome your opinions. I welcome your feedback, your comments. I always love hearing from you and um, speaking with you. So, yes, that ends my reading list. But I also wanted to encourage you um, as we proceed um, throughout the week and in the months to come. We're heading up on Christmas already. Oh, my goodness. How can that be? Um, you know, what is our own story? We might not think that we have a story worth sharing, but we do. Each and every one of us, God has given us a story. And if you have ever felt compelled to write a story, just not sure how to do it. If you have a family member that has um, a wealth of experiences and you love hearing them tell about their stories, encourage them to write it. Uh, if you aren't sure how to do that, I have... Uh, a book called The One Year Collection of Weekly Writing Prompts that I wrote. It is, let me actually show you a copy here, just a collection of writing prompts. Yes. Um, boy, that didn't show up very well with my green screen. But it offers um, a list of questions as well as areas to write in it, and um, one for each week. So it's not overwhelming, easy to do. And it gets you started writing your life story. And you can pick that up um, on my website, dealingbickle.com. So again, thank you for joining me. It's been a pleasure here sharing about books, life, and faith with you. And until next week, have a blessed day. Take care.